today my N6. So chapter 8 is uh, Pelton wheels. So Pelton wheels or Pelton turbines are a form of impulse turbines. They are named after an American engineer by the name of Lester Allen Pelton. Their function is to convert kinetic energy of the water into mechanical or rotational power. So, but they would start uh, before kinetic energy, they will start with potential energy at the top, which is the one that generates the kinetic energy. So, they, therefore, they are use, suitable to use in conditions where the water has a high heat. That high heat is the high potential energy and low flow rate. So, Pelton wheels, therefore, are tangential flow turbines where the water or the jet is tangential to the radius of the circle or of the of the wheel or which is the, called the run so they are a, a, a widely used uh, form of turbines so then uh, in this scenario then this is what happens uh, you will have water that is situated at an uh, an upper area so that then you can be able to draw them to the bottom and generate kinetic energy from the potential energy. So then the H here, the capital H that you have here is the potential energy here at the top will equal to the kinetic energy inside the water here at the bottom. So then this is natural and this is then the, for what you are capitalizing on. Then you are using the kinetic energy that will be generated here to drive the wheel. So then what you will have is then I would have a turbine, a simple turbine, portable turbine that you can use on a farm. So it's a small turbine. So then this turbine will consist of buckets, and then it, the, the 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 water that is coming in through the pipe will be used then to push the turbine. And then this is then the excess water will be con collected here, and then it can be used uh, 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 for other purposes. So then it's as simple forward as this. Uh, this is there for the Pelton wheel. Then a uh, can be used in a in a in a on a small scale, right? For generating a small amount of electricity. Okay. So now, the the Pelton wheels themselves. Okay, the Pelton will consist of buckets. Then the buckets are arranged in this manner, as you can see on the on the picture here. So then the buckets are, are are in designed in such a way that they push water outside. So water will be pushed into direction outside there, and then uh, uh, that is how then the water will be diverted, and then it will be collected at the bottom here. And then the kinetic energy of the water will be converted into rotation and because it will cause this object to rotate. Okay. Then on site the the pipe, this is would be the pipe, the pipe tip will consist of a nozzle. Then the nozzle itself will have a, what is called a needle system. This needle system will be for controlling the flow rate. So then obviously when you can see if you pull back the, the needle, then there will be high flow rate. Then when you push the needle forward, there will be a, 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 a smaller flow rate, but you might increase velocity and stuff like that. So then this is a small scale uh, Pelton or a turbine. Okay, the buckets, when you look at the buckets, this is a cross section of the buckets from the top. When you look at the bucket from the top, the bucket is designed such that it, con it consists of a splinter in the center. Then the jet of water will be fired like this, and then water will be split in two directions like that. And then this is therefore how uh, the, the Pelton wheels or the, uh, the buckets in a Pelton will uh, operate. Okay. Uh, first, we said we convert kin potential energy to kinetic energy. So then this would be the, the equation. I think we are familiar with it. Or uh, this equation is derived from first, you would have said EK at the bottom 
is equals to EP at the top and then you cancel the M's and then you are left with uh, half V squared is equals to GH and then when you multiply by 2 take the square root you will then have this, this equation this therefore equation gives you the velocity of the water inside the pipe okay so now the H that we are using here is the head so but of the is the difference in the height levels between the the water in the reservoir and uh, to the water in the pipe or at the bottom of the pipe but sometimes then there is a pipe friction so then when there is pipe friction then this heat will be reduced when it's reduced then we distinguish between the physical heat this h will be the physical heat or the total heat this would be the height difference and then this will be friction then the friction in the pipe will be calculated using the equation that you are familiar with using the diameter of the pipe and the length of the pipe and then this h therefore will be the effective h or the h when uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the the physical height is reduced by friction then when there is no friction these two h's are equal okay then uh, moving from the pipe I would have the nozzle then whenever I have a nozzle then it means that there is sudden contraction then when there is sudden contraction the diameter here is smaller than the diameter inside the pipe because of that then I will have what is called vena contractor and the velocity uh, of the jet will be smaller than the velocity of inside the pipe then in order to calculate the velocity of the jet this the velocity of the jet will be the velocity of the water that is here and the the velocity velocity of the water that is here and the velocity in the pipe which is given by that equation will be the velocity inside the pipe here so then i'll use therefore the coefficient of velocity here it's a mistake this is cv not cc so that then cv multiplied by root 2 gh right this is the velocity of the jet now that we have the velocity of the jet this velocity we don't use most of the time because we are only focusing on this one we want to know this one okay then the volume of water that will be discharged is q or the flow rate of v dot is the area of the jet with the small diameter of the jet the diameter of the jet will be smaller than the diameter of the pipe right so this is the diameter of the pipe the jet will have its own diameter then the velocity of the jet is this one that we've calculated here then the area of the jet i'll calculate it using this equation and then sometimes then it happens that one pipe uh, leads to two jets so that then you will have maybe a splinter like that and then there will be two jets that are firing on the on the turbine so in this case then the there will be n which is the number of jets so then this total flow rate will be the flow rate here inside the pipe but then the flow rate for each jet will be smaller we'll, we'll, i will have q1 and then uh, when i want these q's are, will be equal when i want to equate them i'll say total q here is equals to these single ones because they will be the same okay then i'll have a double jet if I have a double jet, it means there's two jets. If I have a triple jet, it means there's three jets to one pipe. Okay. In calculating the power that will be generated, uh, we start with then the velocity of the jet. This is the nozzle. The jet will come in this direction. And then when the jet comes, uh, the jet is horizontal. And then when it's horizontal, it means that the actual velocity of the jet is equal to the horizontal component this is the horizontal component because there is no angle there is no vertical component so then the total exact is equal to the well velocity then the buckets move with velocity u this is the mean blade speed as, 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 as used in same as used in power is the velocity of the buckets and then the relative velocity therefore would be the difference between the velocity of the jet minus the velocity of the buckets remember that the water is pushing the buckets so the buckets must have a smaller velocity then 
and the water will be deflected in this direction. When it's deflected, we have theta called the deflection angle, and then, uh, sorry, y being the deflection set angle. So normally then uh, y and theta are related by 180. From there to there is 180. So then we will be used given uh, y instead of being given uh, theta. Then in order to cal cal calculate uh, the other one, we will then say 180 minus theta, right? Uh, sorry, uh, 180 will be given y in order to, to, to calculate in order to calculate theta, then we'll say 180 minus y, right? So then our equations will consist of 180 minus y because y is the deflection angle, and as you can see, y is bigger than 100 by 90, so it's normally 160, 165. Okay, so then the water will be deflected in this angle, in this direction. The vertical component of the velocity of water will be in this direction. The horizontal velocity will be in this direction, the well. And then here I can then calculate uh, beta, I can calculate theta. But what is uh, nice about this is that we want to use this velocity diagram because the velocities have already been developed. Then we are applying the equations. So then this is the graph that was used to derive the equation. So you don't need to come back to this equation. Okay. So these are the definition. Absolute velocity of the jet is the velocity of the jet. Uh, U is the mean blade velocity, is the velocity of the blades. Then we have the relative velocity at inlet, the well velocity at inlet. Uh, VO is the absolute velocity of the water at outlet. Then you have the velocity of flow at outlet, VW at outlet, uh, angle of the water leaving the bucket, etc., etc. Uh, as you, you would be familiar with this in in in, uh, in power, okay. Then the equations. You start with the force. So if we want to calculate the force, so then this force is in a tangential in, in the horizontal direction or in the well direction. So then I'll calculate it by uh, density times uh, q. This is the same as m dot. So I multiplied by the well velocity at inlet minus the well velocity at outlet. Then the equation that has been derived is this one. So when we want to calculate the velocity, the force, we will then need to know the velocity of the water or the jet, the velocity of the buckets, and then also theta, which is then the, 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 the 180 minus y. Okay. So now uh, I can substitute this equation like this, where there is theta, I can put 180 minus y. And then when I want to calculate power, this is power, it's force, this force multiplied by velocity. So I just took this equation multiplied by u, but where there was theta, I put now 180 minus y, right? Then I multiply by u. So this power is the power that will be generated with the electricity. So it's P out, right? So then the P in will come from the total uh, power that was there. It's the total heat multiplied by rho g h. So pressure at the bottom multiplied by the flow rate. Okay. So then the efficiency of the plant, and then I can calculate it by saying P out over P in, or I can use the equations and derive. So I substitute this equation, divided by this, and then I cancel rho q density times q, density times q is common, at the bottom I'm left with gh, at the top u minus, then these are the model for my two main equations. We most of the time calculate power and calculate efficiency. Okay, then y will be given, then we just substitute and then get whatever is missing. Okay, what happens when there is friction? We've already dealt with friction. Uh, obviously, presence of friction reduces the uh, velocity, we, uh, or even reduces efficiency. If there is friction in the pipe, there will be a difference between this small h and this capital H because of this friction. If there is no friction, these are the same, but if there is friction, then I'll reduce it like this. 
over the buckets, if there is friction, the friction reduces the relative velocities. Relative velocity at outlet is equal to N multiplied by the relative velocity at inlet. Then N would be the friction coefficient. It is similar to K in, in power. And then uh, we calculate it the same. When there is 5% friction, then we'll say 100 minus uh, 5% divided by 100. That is how then we'll calculate. So if then there is 5% friction, the uh, K would be, or N would be 0 0.95, same as in power. So as a, as a result, when there is friction over the pipe, I would have that the velocity will become smaller. When there is a peak friction over the bucket, on my power equation, I will put N here, right? And then N is zero comma, it's less than one, zero comma something. On my efficiency term, I will put N here. So then this is how then I will calculate when there is uh, friction.